What's up, y'all? Crazy digging. In the building. You heard me. So, behind me, I got my Prelude 94. Uh, it has the F20B uh, stock axles. Uh, if you watched my vlog from two, or both of them were back to back, I think. I went to the track and uh, I got a nice little rip in my axle boot. It's pretty much on its way out. I think one more pull would have probably snapped it. Um, one more uh, pull down the down the quarter mile would probably definitely would have would have uh, would have snapped it. So um, I'm getting ready to swap it out, and I figure, hey, why not show um, the ones of or those of you who who don't know how to change an axle or never change an axle how it's done and the tools you need. So with that being said, stay tuned. All right, so a couple things you're gonna need um, that I use that I feel makes the job the easiest. Um, you're gonna need a 17. Um, you're gonna need ball joint separator. You're gonna need the axle nut socket. I'm not sure what size this is, maybe 30 or 36, something like that. Um, definitely gonna need that. Uh, a breaker bar, a jack in a jack stand, and a very big flathead screwdriver. Um, probably a hammer and a two by four too. You can kind of kind of play it by ear, you know. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. I feel like that's the quickest way. I'll show you why though. Um, but basically, first thing you're gonna want to do is jack the car up. Um, put a jack stand under there so that you're safe working underneath the car. So we'll start with that. Now here's where things can get a little tricky. Depending on whether or not you have air tools or not, is going to be the difference between the next step. Um, if you have air tools, obviously, just hook up the, uh, the um, axle nut socket and just take it off. Now, if you don't have air tools, um, there's a few ways you can do it. Usually, if your wheels have center caps, you can take the center caps off. Um, but you're still going to have to take the wheel off, pop the center cap out, put the wheel back on, unless you can get your wheel cap, center caps off without taking the wheel off. Um, then put it back on. You probably gonna want to set it back down on the ground and use a breaker bar along with the um, axle nut tool. Break it loose and then you're gonna wanna pretty much jack the car back up, take the wheel back off, take off the axle nut like, like that. Just a little tip. But I've had to do this without uh, tools, uh, air tools anyway. So, but yeah, pretty much now you wanna just take the uh, Axle nut off. Air tools are so much easier. If you watching this and you ain't got air tools? Hey, feel sorry for you, but I've been there, so I know I know you can. So once you get the axle nut off, you're gonna have to do two two next steps. Um, are pretty much you're gonna have to uh, remove the it's remove and separate the lower ball joint as well as the outer control. Uh, no. Outer tire rod. I'm sorry. Um, once you do that, you'll be able to actually kind of sway it, swing it, to, you know, swing it out the way, so you can actually have access to get the the uh, axle out. Um, after you do that, you're gonna have to get underneath and kind of pry the uh, actual axle out of the half shaft. So where the ball joint separator comes into play. So I also forgot one more step. You're actually gonna have to take uh, the bolt out of the fork as well, so you can um, 
take the old axle out and put the new one in. This is two 17s. Other piece of the axle still in there. Yeah, once that boot rips, man, it doesn't actually look like it's in bad condition, just the boot rip. Sometimes you gotta get creative. Get this axle unhooked. So I actually kind of like to uh, compare the axles whenever I pull them out. One, to make sure it's the right part. Um, and two, um, especially with Preludes, what happens is um, the fourth gen axles are actually slightly longer than the fifth gen ones. Um, that's important because if you get a fifth gen and you put it in a, a fourth gen one, it's not going to have the length that it needs to properly turn. And that's probably why the boot rip, because this is actually a fifth gen one. I didn't know that when I put it in. Um, you can tell the difference in the length. The axle shaft is longer, as well as uh, the part that actually connects to the half shaft is 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 bigger as well. So that's probably why this is ripped and why I had to replace it. But yeah, with that being said, I'm gonna put the new one in. It's pretty much reverse engineering. Put everything back the way you took it out, and uh, just make sure that when you put the axle back in, there's a little ring. And you got to make sure that ring snaps into place so that it doesn't easily come back out. So, yep. And once you get the axle in there and you line up the gears, um, it's going to slide into place. And then you, what you're going to want to do, or well, what I do, is I like to put it like a 2x4 on the edge. Um, sometimes you can like wrap the 2x4 in a uh, like a rag or something to help prevent like the wood splitting the uh, boot, which <laughs> then you'll be in the same spot you were. So make sure you don't split the boot. Uh, but I like to kind of put it uh, a 2x4. I kind of fold the rubber back and put it up against the edge of the uh, axle itself where the rubber is still there and kind of tap it with the hammer until, it's, until the uh, axle is pushed all the way in. Last thing you want to do is have to jack this thing back up and um, do it again. Um, but that's pretty much it man. Um, then you want to basically uh, uh, reverse engineer everything you did and work your way backwards, put everything back together and that's pretty much it. thing left now to do is uh start her up drive off in the sunset you know what I mean
I'ma start smoking shit. I'm creeping up while I'm approaching you.